so there's at the end of it, there's something to say about the meaninglessness, the pointlessness of the life of the modern man. And it's something that is not very represented in the current public discussion nowadays. And quite frankly, uh, I can't say I'm tired of it because it's, it's kind of a, a recent discovery for me, especially as I went through a, a minor conservative phase, like a, a mainstream conservative phase where I was um, very convinced of all the talking points of uh, the Ben Shapiro's and the Jordan Peterson's of the internet. And with time, I guess I grew tired of that and recognized in myself that I was parroting some of those talking points and not doing enough thinking myself. And after I read Schopenhauer, who is um, uh, was one of my favorite philosophers, um, in his book, um, Essays and Aphorisms, there's a specific section of that book that says, stop reading so much. And contrary to what that might sound like, it's not stop reading because um, you need to make yourself more of an idiot, but rather um, the more you read, the more you, you um, consume the thoughts of uh, thinkers and people um, who obviously aren't you, the more likely it is you're going to begin parroting um, their viewpoints and opinions without any critical thinking um, of your own. And after I got done with that conservative phase, um, I, I suppose I was sympathetic to the free market and the virtue that many people discuss about, um, the, the virtue that people tend to attribute to those who have a very strong work ethic. And I am inclined to agree that people who are lazy and don't like to do anything with their lives, um, should be not condemned, but, um, at the very least it should be recognized as, well, something bad because, you know, working as a collective towards, um, something better in your immediate community is, um, indisputably the best thing that the community can do. So yeah, no one likes lazy people, but I've given this, uh, a fair amount of thought myself. And I know so many friends now who are working in their early twenties who, uh, you know, have these just like meaningless and um, soul crushing jobs in, in the service industry, for example, where all they do for the majority of the day is just they perform very basic repetitive tasks and there's nothing really to it that enriches the person's inner interests, their, their passions, if you will. And apparently, um, I also have heard that, um, in the United States, uh, the working class at one point had enough say in our government that uh, they were even asking for a, a shorter work week. And I guess that sort of discussion is completely gone. It's not really heard of in the public discussion now to wish for a shorter work week with, with um, what with the increase in productivity in our economy from uh, the, the data that I've seen. I, I saw, I saw a graph recently, I'll have to pull it up, but it's, it showed something like within somewhere in the 1970s, um, productivity, um, didn't stop somewhere in the 1970s. Um, the actual income of the average worker stagnated while productivity continued to increase from that time period on. And I think that this says something, um, about our our modern culture because it seems that everybody in some sense recognizes that there is a, a genuine flaw in this in that um there isn't really enough time for a person to engage in anything that's um, meaningful to themselves if it's not their um if it's not their work and i know more people who work jobs to pay the bills of an apartment that they hardly live in than people who are fortunate enough to work a job where they engage in their passions, engage in their, their open interests. And this is, um, 
Maybe if you had talked about this, uh, you know, 40 or 50 years ago, it wouldn't have been as evident because the data would have said otherwise. But nowadays, I mean, you know, this is anecdotal evidence. Um, there are so many who can't even afford to find housing now. And I think um, in some European countries, such as Ireland right now, there, there are housing crises where, um, you know, working class people can't even uh, um, afford to you know, make their, their everyday rent. I mean, even here in the United States, I think that, um, I'm, I'm of the opinion that, uh, you know, the, the meaning of the everyday man's life is very important because the everyday man is most people, you know, they're not the, the higher ups They're Um, the everyday man sh is the overrepresented person in any general population. And, uh, the more I, I meditate on this, it, um, it just makes me really upset. I know I have somebody who watches my YouTube channel, um, who works, uh, in an oil field. And, um, I think, I believe he described to me something about the, uh, the toil of his work, um, and how it is not really meaningful to him and that he, uh, he gets depressed about it or something. I, I have to find the comments again. But yeah, it's just like, I don't know, this is something that I wanted to bring up to everybody else, but I think this is a, a, a general problem that Gen Z faces compared to even, you know, the millennials, because um, it seems that the paradigm is definitely shifting now, and um, everyone is sort of recognizing to some degree that the, that the, meaning, the, the meaning of work um, is um, not a good enough justification for the endless toil, as I said, in a lot of these, uh, these jobs. And I also, just if I can go on a little tangent, I think Star Wars um, kind of made me think about this a bit recently because um, I'm not sure if anybody here even really likes Star Wars. I know that um, a couple of my friends actually are so done with it because of like both of the prequel and the sequel trilogies. And I think, um, I think after the um, uh, the purchase of Star Wars by Disney in 2012, or was it 2013? Um, everything about Star Wars, um, the essence of Star Wars, you know, essentially changed. I think that it's basically devolved into a sort of meaningless product that Disney is going to milk until the end of time. And I was initially very excited for the, um, for the sequel trilogy to come out in 2015 because I grew up with the original six movies. People who are older than me don't even really like the prequels and say that Star Wars started and ended with episodes four and six. And I beg to differ, but the difference with the meaning of Star Wars then and the meaning of Star Wars now is that it followed Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, which is something, um, what was it called? It was called The Hero of a Thousand Faces, a story that everybody can sort of relate to because we, we, we somehow can easily place ourselves in the shoes of a main character who follows that, that particular story arc. And I think it resonated with America at that particular time because it was a, a very much a modern telling of that myth, you know, what with space exploration and how we had um, visited the moon about, what was it, nine years before the release of that movie in 1977. But the, the difference now with Disney is Star Wars is no longer a new phenomenon that people are, you know, it, it, in, in, um, uh, obsessed with as they probably were 30 or 40 years ago. I mean, like, sure, they're definitely obsessed with Star Wars, but it, it's it's different now in that the interest is already there, and now Disney is just interested in making a profit on it, and it doesn't really have the same spiritual weight as the older movies did. I mean, these these newer movies, um, to some degree, were made specifically to make profit. I mean, we can look at Episode Seven as a retelling of episode four, but just a little bit shinier and with um, diversity quotas um, you know, mixed in between. And how this all relates to um, work and leisure is, 
and the people continually demand for this sort of thing, you know, I mean, I know, um, I don't really want to name drop or anything, but I know some people who are so tired after their jobs that they just don't really have energy to do anything, and so they, um, you know, they drink or watch movies or, or, or participate in, in what we might call hobbies, um, which uh, don't really do anything to benefit your, um, your inner goals or, or the things that you strive to achieve over the course of your life, but rather to, to like, you know, calm you or to relax you after a, such a hard day of basically doing nothing but watching the clock and um, finding a way to rationalize how meaningless your job actually is. And so I just think that we're, we're heading into a time where it doesn't, it's not obvious that our lifestyle is really contributing in any way to the real meaning of our lives. And what that meaning is, I think um, partially is community, of course, and yeah, like I just said now, the the, the pursuit of of achievement, you know, like like drawing a picture or um, like writing writing a book or like some form of engagement with literature or or you know abstraction or intellectual thought or at the very least like something that's that's meaningful to the person, something that has like a a, a communal purpose and not just for the sake of you know production and consumption. I think our generation is really the one that has been confronted with this this spiritual problem of our time. I, I don't think that we um, we really have anything but work and consumption. We we produce at our jobs and then we consume later. And that the actual like any any tangible purpose is completely gone from our lives. Um, and I think that this, this is just it's very tragic. And it's a shame that it's not even really in the current discussion now, the um, the pointlessness of the work um, of the average man. And I wish it were, because it's just, it's constantly um, overshadowed or, or talked over by the, the radical capitalist types who tell you that uh, the, um, you know, communism has, has killed however many fucking people or that socialism is inherently evil to our society, and I just, I, I, I beg to differ. But then you, you know, when you start um, mentioning these talking points, it's just you get lumped in with the, the progressive left, and it's like, I don't really identify with anything of our time, because I find that there is just so much um, babble and inanities about these pointless, idiotic um, social I issues that nobody really cares about. And we're really just, we're all hungry for meaning. And I think Jordan Peterson was um, was a, a, a good step in the right direction, but I think where I definitely disagree with Peterson is the... He, Peterson's very much a free market capitalist, I and mean, he said it himself, he's very much um, like the, the evil capitalist that everybody talks about. It really does feel palpable, and even as somebody who, I would argue, has a decent work ethic and likes to pursue things for... Himself, I have worked the, the, the crappy service job. I have been behind that cash register just doing mindless tasks, thinking constantly about when I'm going to get home later that night so I can get some rest before the next day. I mean, we even have things, and I think that this should, I think that there, there, there's um, a good reason to say that this should be illegal. It's uh, clopening. I remember how much, um, how, how the, your boss just likes to squeeze so much work out of you for like the the smallest pay and this you know that um that sounds like classic marxism but i'm not trying to go in that general direction this is just like a very dry critique of my own experiences and um i just didn't really like i mean i i worked at a, at a fast food restaurant where i would work until two or three in the morning i think i worked till three in the morning so i could feed the um uh, feed all the people coming out of the bars um, down the street so that they can get their fix on hot dogs. And then in the same breath, I was expected to work till, till three in the morning on a Monday night and then come back at 11 o'clock Tuesday morning. And I think that some jobs are probably even worse than this. And there's just, there's no time for the person to even recover. 
and yet if he chooses not to pursue this work, then he, if he doesn't have a college education or if he's not smart enough to be an entrepreneur, and even then that's a very difficult task, then um, he's, uh, there, there's really no meaning um, to, to his life and he's going to continue with this, this um, schedule stuck in a bovine stupor for uh, the remainder of his life. And I think some people are okay with that because of the um, the, the integration of like the, the, the Protestant work ethic in American culture now. But there's just something to be said about how pathological this has really become. And I think that they're, they're, the, the, thesis, the thesis of what I'm, of this video is just the lack of meaning, the lack of real like purpose in anybody's life, um, lives. How we just, we go to work and then we consume mindlessly when we get home and there needs to be some kind of change to that, I think, if we're going to um, heal the um, the degeneracy and the um, the illness from which our culture is currently suffering. Um, I think this is the first time I've really gone into this sort of topic, but again, I just wanted to say this is, um, I don't hear many creators broaching this particular subject, and I wanted to be one who does, and even if this isn't um, the first time somebody has spoken of these ideas, I feel that somebody else who is in the service industry right now, not um, procuring, not not feeling a sense of, of, of meaning in their lives, uh, needs to hear this. So that's, um, that's about all I really wanted to discuss today. This is a very dry video, and I don't expect this to be edited too much. I just, um, I've been mulling over this a lot, and yeah, that's, that's about all. So, I'll be back to my, uh, my facetious, frivolous self in the next video, or hopefully. And let me know, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and for anybody who is, um, not yet joined, I say this at the end of every, um, every video, please join the Discord. It's, um, linked in the description. I'm not sure where it is. It's probably below there. So, cheers, and peace out.